We are live, everybody. Hello. All right. Well, welcome to another episode of Crap Beer Gone Wild. This is Crap Beer Gone Wild number 18. What, what would Lucifer drink? That's right. Eight, 18, a great number there because uh, Mr. Ron is not available here, so I have to go ahead and fill in the seat there for the uh, – Fun facts and stuff. Fun facts of number 18. November 18, William Tell went ahead and shot and split an apple off his son's head. That's right. Uh. Now, yeah. Now, April 18, uh, 1775, Paul Revere and William De, um, DeWall, DeWall. DeWall <laughs> went ahead and uh, delivered the warning that the British were coming, which is kind of like Lucifer. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, in case you didn't know, if you go ahead and take Lucifer's number, which is 666, six, six, mm -hmm. which is 3 times 6, you get the number 18. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. We, did, we did not even plan that out, did we? That was there we go. Like there we go. Now, the number 18 is actually the double sister of the number 9. Now, the number 9 is known as the table of nine, which is actually in the Pentagon for the, uh, you know, for the Satan in there. Because if you uh, know that nine times two is 18, but if you add 18, one plus eight, you get nine. And so you can do that too. Yeah. And the number 666 is known as the table of the beast. So if you take... <laughs> So you go ahead and you take 666 and you times it by any number. I'll give you an example. 666 times 2 gives you 1,332. And if you take that and you add 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, you get the number 9. So you can do that 666 times any number. You add up the uh, things there and you'll come up with 9 at the end. So it is the table of the beast. Wow. So, so. All right. So, I'm Quentin Kretschmar here in Chicago, Illinois, playing the role of Mr. Ron from the Louisiana Beer Channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here in Chicago, Illinois, with and my good buddies off on the other side, Mr. Rod J here in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. And I am Thomas Metal 75 Eric from the Massachusetts Beer Review channel of YouTube, located in Southern Massachusetts. Massachusetts! Oh. Yeah. So, well, great. Well, this week, well, last week, as everybody knows, we had the uh, great uh, What Would Jesus Brew? Uh, this week, we uh, decided to go the other route here. And the size of what would Lucifer drink? Now, I'm not throwing this out there, and I'm not going to go ahead and uh, get it, you know all crazy. I know Ron would love this kind of stuff, but it has been kind of known that Lucifer is known as the um, morning star, okay? Because uh, apparently, you know, it was in the morning and stuff when he was dropped and stuff. It was kind of like this, you know, this shining light. He was known as lightning. The shining light, early morning star, Venus, was actually uh, the star known for Lucifer. And now uh, Lucifer in uh, Latin is actually light bearer, is the actual translation. <laughs> now, here's the conspiracy thing that I'm not 100% about it. I'm not going to jinx. I'm not going to say anything because of this political party that we're having. But it has been known, it has been known that the Statue of Liberty, if you actually look at it closely, is actually a man kind of dressed up who is the bearer of the light. So people are saying that the Statue of Liberty, if you actually look at the features of it, it's actually not a woman. It's actually a man. If you look at the features, the facial features and stuff of it, it's actually a man. And it holds the bearer of the light. And so people kind of coincident that. But I'm just putting that out there. 
just so that it gives something for Mr. Uh, Ron to go ahead and, uh, you know, talk about for the next 45 minutes when he uh, decides to jump in. So. I feel like we crossed over to X Files or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know that Lucifer was supposed to symbolize music. Ah. But he got kicked out of heaven, supposedly. Yeah. So, wow. but then, well, that, yeah, that I didn't know. That I didn't yeah, know. and that's why, like, a lot of but, preachers and stuff look at music as being the bad way in for Satan. Wow, all right. Yeah. Well, so I got the Three Floyd War Mullet Double Indian Pale Ale. Nice. That's what oh. I'm going to go with. I kind of like the uh, little Very design nice. on there. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Have not had this, so I'm going to be excited about that. I see uh, Mr. Eric Metal there is already excited jumping in. What you got there, buddy? I have a Two Roads Brewery beer. They're from uh, Stratford, Connecticut, and this is their Rhodes Mary's Baby. Rhodes Mary's Baby. <laughs> Which we all know is the movie uh, directed by the one and only Roman Polanski with uh, Mia Farrow, and that was... Um, According to Wikipedia, it's a film. The film chronicles the story of the pregnant woman who gradually discovers that her husband has made a pact with a secret religious cult, and that their true father, and that the true father of the baby is the devil. No. Not, not Darth Vader. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's nice there. And uh, uh, I actually, well, I've got one. I got two, and another one. But I'll probably just drink that one later, but. I actually went east to Claw Brewing. Devil's the Milk. Devil's Milk Barley Wine. Ooh, yeah, it's money wow. in the bank right there. So <laughs> I ended up getting this for a pretty good uh, deal and saw it out there. And I was even thinking about it. One of the guys that was there, a distributor for one of their breweries, like, hey, did you see they got that Devil's Milk over there? Already in the cart. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who are you telling? I, I know what I'm doing here, sir. <laughs> yeah, so this one is a 10% ABV barley wine. All right. And, and then, we got the boozers in the house. And I don't know if I right. talked about this one before or not, but I always have around my arrogant bastard ale. So right. there you go. All what right. is up? We got our Canadian brother from across the border. Hello, hello. As you can hear me here, he got in a little late. He's got the socialist drivers up there taking up the road and everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I have got a doozy for you guys tonight. Oh yeah, so what do you got there? All ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children over the age of twenty-one. Um, <laughs> for you tonight, I actually just picked this up. Uh, this actually came from the Canadian Craft Club. Uh, it's a club that uh, t uh, sends beer out to people every month. This one, God would not drink. He would not touch it. Jesus would not touch it. But hell on earth would actually love it. From a troupe de diable, meaning the devil of devil something. Of them, right? <laughs> I thought it was from the cabin. <laughs> We have the Shki, uh, the the Shiv Tabernak. Oh. Hmm. Nice. Coming in at five percent, and as you can see, the devil does promote it himself on the lid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that looks more like Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it might be. Um, but I guys, I, I I want you to go and do a little bit of a Google search for the word tabernacle. I'll spell it out for you. Mm -hmm. T a b a r n a k. You're gonna love this one. I swear to God, if Russia hacks my computer, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna use Wikipedia like I always do. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm an Urban Dictionary. Is that the right one to be in here? Oh, okay. yes, sir, it most certainly is. Oh, no, all right. All right. Ah. This beer's got a lot of tabernacle, does it? Yeah. And I'm going to say it, tabernacle. <laughs> but can I say it'll tabernacle you? 
<laughs> There's derivatives of that word. Oh. Urban Dictionary coming there through. is enough head on here that would probably make Monica Lewinsky jealous. Whoa. Uh, so you use that word a lot in Canada? Um, well, I know the French do. The okay. French Canadians. Let me yeah. just let me just correct this. Is this French Canadians in here? But I didn't know if you might use it as well. Um, I I don't myself. Um, I I use the actual English word of it. Okay. So uh, I, I I won't. Um, this is actually out of uh, Shawinigan, Quebec, Canada. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a light, heavy blonde beer with greenish highlights, brewed in with rye and a selection of atypical uh, hops. It has a yeah. very floral scent, reminiscent of roses, with a fruity aroma, which culminates in a very long finish. Now, this doesn't sound evil at all. Uh, <laughs> leaving the well, I think the, the blonde and the green eyes sound yeah. really evil. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it's a collaboration beer, apparently, uh, with Brasse de Sene. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the first part of the name stems from Brussels Crow word, Schieven Architect, meaning twisted architect. And Quebec curse word, of course, speaks for itself. Uh -huh. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I didn't get it. I just got on thinking about it. I'm gonna read my bottle because everybody's read their bottle. Well, <laughs> Preston didn't read his, but I'm read mine. Yeah. All right, go ahead. <laughs> no prayer, exorcism, or divine intervention can save your soul once our unholy barley wine style ale seduces your palate with a sensual fruit, esters, a mighty malt backbone, and a demonic hop presence. One sip and you will believe the milkman cometh. All right. Ooh, yeah. all right. A nice little write up on that one. Yeah. Mine is kind of short, though. It's not a song. It says, this huge double, 3 PA, will make you want to grow a mullet if you don't already have one. And, <laughs> and go to war if you are not already. So, now, it's the, the three now voices in, the, in, in, in Indiana, so they see a lot of mullets. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, I do have a second beer that I was going to go, and this Excellent. one... And well, this one I'm, here, I'm actually going to go ahead, and for those of you that have followed us, will definitely get the irony of this one. Yeah. This is the Space Station Middle Finger. Oh. So, uh, so that's for that space rocket uh, who keeps uh, jeopardizing my computer. <laughs> and uh, this right here. Is still because today I'm using my phone. So to all of that space uh, technology stuff, here you go. Yeah. Uh, well, we may we may have to keep you in your phone. You're doing well. <laughs> yeah. Well, my beer and might as well get started with the actual reviewing. I'll read a little bit of the description and dive right in if you don't mind. Um, so for mine is a six point eight percent. I'm not exactly. I think it's a it's a pumpkin ale, and it's a rum barrel aged pumpkin ale. They say on their website, "Rhodes Mary's Baby" is a traditional pumpkin ale with two Rhodes spin. It's aged in rum barrels for added complexity and depth of flavor. The result is a smooth drinking ale with notes of pumpkin spices, vanilla oak, and a touch of rum. And according to the bottle, it's rated R for rum barrels. Oh, wow. nice. and the, the look of it's pretty um it's it's a dark copper kind of a rusty color i mean in the light it's it's more of a red color in you know the right. way you're looking at it, it's probably that dark orange color it doesn't have a whole bunch of head retention there's some of it there but it pretty much dies immediately um it does look pretty effervescent, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I don't know if you can even see it, but the smell of the beer is definitely there's some of the rum, you know, that sweet rum scent to it. There is that um, vanilla and the spices of the pumpkin pie, kind of like you would expect to have. There's the graham cracker crust in the background. There's a big malty presence to it. A little nutmeg? Yeah, it might even be a little bit of a hoppy um, spice hop component to it. 
But other than that, it smells, you know, like a pumpkin pie with a little bit of the rum sweetness to it. Nice. And the taste initially, you're getting the rum, and it's actually got a almost a souring component while it dries. It almost has that Belgian beer, that Belgian um, dark strong ale kind of a souring component from the yeast. I don't know. I don't, I'm actually, I'm not really sure what's creating that souring sensation. But it's kind of like it's, as Jay might say, as Ron might say, it's kind of like turn fruit almost in, in a sense, not not to the point where it tastes off or off pudding, but it has that turn fruit kind of a quality to it. It's definitely got the slickness of that, of that rum barrel. You get some vanilla and you get some spices. There's a little bit of a, again, spices, a hop spice to it, as well as the pumpkin spice to it. Are you getting any liquor um, afterburn? Zero. This beer okay. is, it's it, it's on the sweet side, but it actually dries very fast. Wow. So if you're not a big pumpkin fan, I mean, there's that pumpkin-y element and that sweet element to it. Not overly sweet, but if you like a little bit of a souring taste to the beer and you like that, I don't want to say almost like a sour mash, but that's sort of almost what it's reminding me of, actually. So very light on the pumpkin flavors. We've got those spicy notes. The vanilla and the rum work well together, and at 6.8% for a rum barrel finished beer, it could be a sessionable one if you can find it in your area. I probably wouldn't session too many at 6.8, but it's easy drinking stuff. I guess I would give it a 3.75 out of 5 right now. It's doing pretty well. All right. The only thing complaint I have as far as it being a rum barrel style beer, it's a little thin on the mouth. I would say it's a straight up medium at this point. It, it thins very fast towards the end of the sip. Nice, nice. All right, Boozer, what good. do you got there, buddy? Well, I, I already said what I had. Um, you have a head Good explorer. Lord. Yeah. I think you got a big head, but damn, it's a big head. <laughs> what can I say? I love my head. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, folks. Tabernacle. Tap her. Well, I don't know exactly. Bigger, you'd be Edward Headlong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I like to say that this is the actual beer that's causing this, but damn it, it's not. <laughs> um, the glass actually is dirty. I pulled it out of a clean area, and it's dirty. Mm. Um, because uh... <laughs> yeah, I am getting a lot of carbonation coming off the bottom there. You yeah, almost got more carbonation than the beer in the bottle. I know. Well, you know what? <laughs> Looks like vanilla chai. When in doubt, drink from the bottle. <laughs> ah, there you go. Well, it seems like you've been tabernacked. I've been very <laughs> tabernacked. And it's been really tabernacked. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back I do not like him, eh? <laughs> For all the people that are French watching this, I am very deeply sorry. Please don't kill me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, honestly, it, it's the smell has actually been coming off as sort of like a, a yeasty, almost like a weedy smell. Um, you do have some, almost, you do have a floral and a little bit of a fruity note to it. It is light on the body. Um, it is actually really quite drinkable. Uh when you can get through the head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Del Artois scraper. That's what yeah, <laughs> If I drink that, it's going to get all over my face. Anyway. Oh, that's what she said, too. <laughs> Craft beer gone wild. <laughs> it's always a good time when you bring in the painkiller. <laughs> So, the taste Damn. from the bottle. <laughs> you, poor, poor you poor people, you didn't know what to expect with me. Uh, <laughs> Rob J is losing it. <laughs> it's a little spicy, not creamy. Um... <laughs> It's light, it's refreshing, it's delicious, it's nutritious. 
we're, 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 we're still talking about beer, right? <laughs> Take it as you will. Take it as you will. <laughs> but for now, I am talking about the beer, yes. Yeah. Wow. You do sort of like have a Belgian spice to it. It's actually really good. Um, really drinkable. Uh, crushable. And you can probably down it without... Um, well, you probably have to have a few swallows on it, but <laughs> oh, when the crowd goes silent, <laughs> he said swallows. <laughs> what style of beer is that supposed to be, by the way? I, I, I think, honestly, I'm not quite sure. Um, like a Belgian strong pale or something like that? Possibly. Well, it's not strong because it's only at 5%. Uh, Ooh, cause there's... So maybe just a pale ale. Possibly. Uh, water, malted barley, rye, hops, yeast, uh, and contains gluten. Ah, oh, crap. There goes my night. Uh, <laughs> gee, it has wheat in it. Are you sure it's got gluten? Um, <laughs> I, I have the tasting notes upstairs, and I can go find them, but uh, that means I have to walk, and I don't want to do that. There's, it's saying a hazy blonde beer. So All it's right. a blonde. A blonde, okay. Yep. Right. A blonde with lots of head. There you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you got the head from it, it's a blonde that gives a lot of head. <laughs> and the percussion. Yep. <laughs> Cue percussion. <laughs> Here we go. Anyway. <laughs> So now that uh, I've dirtied up your uh, podcast to get her vo- of logging in, so you know. hey, we're getting all new clientele coming in out of watch. <laughs> <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> YouTube had just moved us to the other channel. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Like, what do you mean, you mean it's age restricted? We haven't sworn at all. I suppose it's Maggie as adult, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know what tabernacle means. <laughs> no, no, they do not. <laughs> Get the tabernacle uh, out of here. Uh, <laughs> But how do you like it? How do you rate it? Yeah, it's yeah, actually gotta rate really it. good. Oh yeah, the rating. Um, actually, I would give this about a four out of five. It's actually pretty good. Uh, like it's it's light. It's it doesn't it doesn't drink like a five percent. Um, but it's great for a summer's day. Even though it looks like it's it like the the stuff on there. It looks like it's an evil heavy beer, but it's not. It's really light and really just quite delicious. I like beers that come out of uh, Quebec, honestly. Uh, they really know what to do out there. It's it's quite nice. So, yeah, I actually enjoy this one a lot. Great. Nice. All right. Well, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do mine real quick if you want, Crunch, and then I'll let you. Yeah, down. go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So this is the one that I mentioned earlier, the Claw. This is Devil's Milk, and if you're not familiar with the Claw, you can actually check out my blog website www.rajbeerventures.com where I've done a post and a story and an interview with the claw so you can find that out there to find out more about them from the east coast but the devil's milk nice barley wine didn't have too much of a head when I poured it out but it has that nice dark amber I don't know kind of what copper type color um, you get all the aroma coming off of it of a barley wine they have some of that sweetness. You have some of that dark fruit action. Son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a guest over here. Give me a second. Dark <laughs> fruit action. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> He's just tabernacking everything up. Anyway, <laughs> it's got that nice smoothness to it. It's definitely not one that is a crushable one. It's definitely one you would take your time with. Take it down nice and slow. You can actually drink through this for a while. Like if I was going to kick back and watch an episode of something, I could probably go through a glass of this over that hour, just relaxing, getting into it. Like like most barley wines, matches up nice if you want to pop a cigar in and sit back and really enjoy it. Because with that barley wine quality, the more you let it sit there, the warms up. The more the aroma comes out, the more the flavors come out as well. So. With the barley wine, I always recommend if you take it out, let it sit maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes before you actually open it. And then that way you have more of the flavors in play too. On the taste, it's kind of a 
smooth taste. You have a little bit of hop action to the front, but not nothing too much, nothing really on the back. And it's like drinking a um, smooth out type liquor. I just did a review on the, uh, uh, I think it was Crafty Hen, and it was kind of like that. It's got a distinguished taste to it, almost like a single malt scotch type thing. It's almost you just want to sit there and enjoy it take the smoothness in, get it worked around the mouth, and just kick back, relax, put your feet up. But comes out very nice. Um, for me, as far as a rating on this one, I put this one probably at about a a four. I had some good drinkability with it, but you do have to be that barley wine kind of fan to really enjoy it. Right. Some people won't be able to get into it if it's a little too harder for them. Um, but overall, very nice on the, uh, the one here from DeClaw, The Devil's Milk. Excellent. All right. Yeah, and if you see it on Untapped, Untapped has it wrong like they do on a few things. It says 11 and a half percent, but the 2016 edition is 10. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. I just lose disappear, though. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had to go change his pants after that last yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is. He said he had a guess. Hey. And it, like, who do you think he's actually chasing right now? I had a Maybe. spider about this big on my wall. So. Oh, God. That was kind of... yeah. I was like, hey, look, my wall's more. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I got the uh, the war mullet from uh, Three Floyds here. So this one here looks like the great and uh, I like to say double Indian pale ale. So nice. for those of you that like uh, Indian pale, this is your double XL, buddy. All right. So, you talking to me? No, I'm talking, talking to, to me. you. I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, well, you can I see don't see nobody down. else here. You must be talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Four is out a nice big head on there, a nice little uh, two-finger head. There you go. Got some nice, great carbonation. Nice, fast little bubbles popping up out of there. There's a lot of little bubbles going. Yes. Yeah, it's, got a yeah, nice that's nice screaming orange. right there. Yeah. So that's really good. The thing about this, the it was actually bottled uh, 7 14 16. So July 14th. So got a couple of uh, got a couple of months in there, but that's all right. Two months in the bottle. Looks great. Look at all the hopping there. It's got a nice little orange citry uh, smell right off the bat, right up out of the out of the front here. It's really big, citry, nice uh, orangey now flavor citry. in there. Yeah, what are you laughing at, Eric? What do you got? <laughs> you said you citry. Got? Is it citry? Is it citrusy? Well, uh, citry, kind of. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, like, like, what these citrusy? It's like either the two use or the two youths. You know, we yeah. know, we're all good here. <laughs> I have a bad knack of making fun of people yeah. and really well, making a, things, so I apologize. That's all, right. that's all right. My girlfriend does it all the time because <laughs> like I said, for some, I'm somebody who speaks nine languages, and trust me, I mix up words all the time. So right. I'm not a, uh, I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> Actually, you'll just have to, uh, I have to rewind and figure out, not to watch, uh, watch the video again and think to myself, what the hell did I really mean? So. <laughs> All uh, right, some citrusy flavor, yes. So we're back to the citrusy flavor. <laughs> it's got the, it's got that nice orange um, right in there. So I really like that. Head coming down just a little bit. So I'm going to give this nice, nice little taste to taste out, see what come out. Nice, dry. It's got a... Um, it's got like the rind, it's got that rind dry flavor, like that outer rind flavor dryness to it in the back. Uh, really good. Got, you get more of the um, green hops in the front. You, you know, you don't get too much barley. It's more of the hops in there. Nice. It goes down. It kind of sits in. It weighs a little bit. It's good. Definitely double Indian pale ale. You're not good. It's not as light. And stuff, but it's not heavy, heavy. Kind of a medium size, it's really good. This will go really good cutting with any type of a um, of a Thai food, anything with a little bit of um, 
uh, but you want to put a little uh, sweet, uh, sweet, you know, salt on it. You want to kind of tame it down the sweetness. This will definitely uh, be right in that category, right there. It's good. Um, nothing I would go out of my way and uh, look for, but it is a really good uh, double Indian pale ale for somebody who's looking for that nice. Um, like I said, there's more of the um, of the uh, hops than the barley flavor. You get more greenish in there, a little bit more of that rind on there. I'm going to go on this one here about a 2.9. Oh, wow, 2.9. No, 2.9. Uh, it's not bad, but it's drinkable. It's good. Definitely uh, good with food, but something I'm not just going to go running out and seek. So, All right. So... You know, I had a three Floyds. I should have used the other one. I had another zombie dust, but I drank it yesterday. I could have used that on here too. That's a good. That's a good beer for three Floyds. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, we have got their second beer, Mister Metal. I nope. unfortunately will not be drinking a second beer tonight. Uh, <laughs> well, why is that? <laughs> well, I do have to do this driving, and this big bomber is. Um, Pretty much, um, because oops. anything else I've got is over five percent. <laughs> because Boozer, Boozer can only do one head at a time, and that's it. He's got to now go rest up for a night. <laughs> I need to have my smoke and sleep. I've had enough head tonight. <laughs> He's drinking the baby Satan beers there. <laughs> yeah. It's like little baby Jesus, little baby Lucifer. Well, I mean, look at that. He's, 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 he's in somebody's arms. It's like they're cr cradling him. It's so cute. Uh, so what's the uh, – what's probably the best um, dark side beer you've ever had? Something Ooh. like a dark side type beer. Okay, let's see. Dark side, dark side, dark side. Well, I've had the Arrogant Bastard. That's not bad. Um, I have had a Hell's Box 666. Honestly, it was 6.6% alcohol. Um, the one that I really liked was actually um, out of Denmark. Um, now, I'm trying to remember the name of it because I can never remember the name of it. Uh, there we go. Sorry, looking it up. It is Hef and Vordemelis, and it is the 666 beer from Brewery de Molen. All right. And it is one heck of, like, I didn't like it in the beginning because it was really strong, really, really powerful. But here, I'll throw this in chat for you to see. This is the picture in a, a sort of like a really brief description it was very coffee forward and it always it, it, it was one of those evil evil beers truly evil just by the uh the pitcher and everything it was yeah. it was because so we did it we got the butter knife out <laughs> <laughs> Cut that with a butter knife <laughs> yeah i can tell you that Probably the most dark side evil beer that I've ever had. And I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago. I had a buddy of mine that at the time he worked at a pretty big liquor store in, in the town that I live in. And one of my parents was going through the liquor store and trying to get some recommendations for what to get me as a craft beer guy for uh, Christmas. So my buddy recommended me the Mesopolis Stout from Avery Brewing. Now, Mesopolis apparently is the second fallen angel. And according to the Avery Brewing website right now, it's 15% alcohol by volume. And it only comes Ooh. in a 12 ounce bottle, I believe. Wow. Yeah, you get a 12 ounce bottle, and you can find them on kegs in there seasonally from November through December. But you, usually you'll find them pretty much at your bigger chain beer stores or your bigger box type liquor stores that do a good craft beer selection most of the year just because it's such a big beer and i'm not saying that they don't sell these kind of beers but they usually do end up um keeping around for a while because they're kind of expensive i think it's like a ten dollar uh, us dollar beer just from one of those bottles um and i remember at the time 
not being such quite a huge Imperial Stout fan. I mean, I, I think if I tried that beer now, I would have respected it a lot more for what it was. I just found that it was very, very upfront. Um, had a very upfront boozy and and a, and a hot heat to the to the alcohol. To it. But I think if I tried it now, I might appreciate it for what it is. And definitely, it's one of those kind of beers, like Rajay was saying with his barley wine tonight, that you just got to sit with and relax and take your time with. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. That sounds fascinating. Uh-huh. Yeah, it should be. If you can get Avery beers, I don't oh, know yeah. about Alberta, yeah. Canada, yeah. but you might be able to find some of these beers in their Demon of Ales series. Now, they have wow. Mistopolis, the Samuels, and the Beast, which is 16.8%. Wow. Wow. And that's a grand crew. Yeah, so the Demon of Ales from Avery are big, bad demons of ales and that big alcohol by volumes. Yeah, because that 17% alcohol is strictly uh, liqueur at that point. Yeah, so. I mean, it's kind of hard unless they do a lot of good things to the brewing process to, to right. compensate for the alcohol percentage. It's kind of hard right. to not make it taste that way. Like I say, if you have a good malt, to me at least, I like beers even with big hoppy IPAs. If they have more of a malt balance to them, they're a lot more enjoyable for me to drink than if they're just one-dimensional. I don't like those kind of beers. All mm-hmm. right. Not just me. What about you, Crunch? Anything? Um, as far as uh, demon type beers, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, as far as demon type, nothing really jumped out of my mind. Um, haven't really, uh, you know, seeked out, you know, particular particular demon other than the uh, space rocket. <laughs> uh, that thing there, that's about the only one. But. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and definitely uh, do my second one here and give that space rocket the uh, middle finger. So, like I said, <laughs> I'm actually I'm doing it on my uh, phone, so they can't do anything. They can't block me off. They can't knock me off on this one. So this is good. This is actually an American pale ale. All right. So American little, pale ale. Yeah. A little darker than uh, the first one that we had, which is the double IPA. Um, this one here doesn't have as much of the carbonation going through it, but it did have a nice little head. It does have a nice little lacing on the glass. Definitely a lot greener uh, flavor, more hoppier, uh, a little bit more green uh, flavoring in there. I kind of like that a little bit. I can, I can tell already that the uh, it's going to be a little lighter. The style. Let's give it a taste out. Yeah, definitely uh, way lighter. It's a little bit watery down for my taste, but I, that's what I was expecting. And, um, you know, it's good. It's kind of something that would I pair this up with food? Well, here's the thing. I would if it's something like a hot dog. I would if mm-hmm. it's something of a, um, you know, a finger food chicken, you know, a real light white meat. Type um, food because it's very watery. It's got that green uh, hops to it. There's really nothing special coming out of it. What's the ABV on that one again? It does not say. So, Mr. Metal will have to uh, check it out. So, space beer. And it's the space station. Middle finger from Three Floyds. Base station. Yeah, that was it. Was well, said six percent of untap. Yeah. Yep. Fifty IBU, but could yep. be right. Might not be right. Oh, um, look at the website. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah six percent according to the website. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, like I said, it's a little watery uh, for my taste. It would, like I said, be good for the hot dog. Good for the uh, chicken. Um, you know, I had some uh, chicken wings here earlier while waiting to go on. So it would have been great with that. Kind of cut through the little heat there, kind of you know watered down. But I had the hot hot sauce uh, for, with my chicken wing, that would have been great. But uh, all in all, I'm not like wild blown out of the um, the fact. And the kind of funny thing is, I I went just by label looks alone today when I picked both these out, and come to find out when I uh, looked at them, both their tops were the same. Come to find out they're both from uh, Three Floyds. I didn't I didn't know that when I uh, pulled them out. So that was just by random uh, pick. 
So they were not next to each other or anything like that. So that was kind of uh, random. But I had to get that space because of the middle finger. For those that have, I watched the show, and know I always get cut off halfway through my uh, conversations and stuff. So not I today. Had to, not yeah. today. That's right. The, the middle finger is working. So. <laughs> I think it's that computer that kills you. <laughs> yeah, something. It's something. It overheats but, uh, just with all the beer you got. On this one here, I'm definitely going to go ahead and do uh, 3.1. Oh, it's a little better than the last one. Yep, a little bit better than the, than the other one. Um, the only problem is it's just a little too watered down. Uh, you know, it's getting a little cooler around here. So I'm going to start to like my uh, little thicker uh, beers, you know, more like get into my uh, working up to my stouts. So, But yeah. this one here, for right now, uh, this weather, uh, for the food that I had earlier today, it's up. 3.1, good, not bad. I Excellent. would definitely uh, pull it up and uh, enjoy it. Nice. Uh, All right. That's a good one. Well, I think that, um, I think I did the Eric, I, I think I've done Eric and Bastardale before, but. You, you talked about it at one point on our, on, our, when, on our Thursday nights. Okay, so I did talk about it before, so I'm just yeah. going to drink it then. But yeah. as far as oh. the best beer that I've had from the dark side, it's probably been Founders Brewing in their Dark Penance. Hmm. I don't know if you guys hmm. had that one. I have had that one, so yeah. I don't agree with that. That's like a double black IPA. They write it up as a heavy malt foundation includes crystal malt for sweetness and just enough midnight wheat malt to push the color to black. The bitterness is huge, but balanced by malt sweetness and alcohol burn. The <laughs> hop flavors and aromas range from citrus to floral to pine thanks to the delicious blend of hand selected Chinook and Centennial hops. And last time I had that one, I rated like a four seven five. That's probably the one of the better ones I've actually had total as well. But they do a great job at founders. Yeah. yeah. I think uh I think like the best I would think now if I uh if I think back would be Dragon's Mill. Mm, there you go. I like dry I like Dragon's Mill. That was uh very good. I yeah, for, I, for as good as that beer is, I find it everywhere, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I've done the bourbon one, though. I can't remember. I have to double check. I've never had that. I've seen that, like, more people drinking that lately. Mm. And we just had a beer festival last weekend that I'll have some stuff coming up on YouTube on that where I interviewed a couple of the couple people from uh, Ryan Geist and from Little Fish Brewing, and we shot some stuff there. But we had some pretty good ones there. It was one that we had a barley wine from Rock Bottom. I don't know if you guys have that near you at all, but they have we one have called Old Curmudgeon Barley Wines, 11.2%. That was freaking awesome. Interesting. Yeah, we have Rock Bottom. I don't know if it's Hell Beer or not, but Old oh. Curmudgeon sounds like it should be. I was going to say, I think there's a Rock Bottom in Boston. I, that's, I've never been to that. A lot of people overlook it because it's like a chain, but they do make yeah. some good beers there. Yeah, they make it on site, right? On premise. Yeah. They make their yeah. own promise. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'll have to check that out sometime if I didn't boss. Yeah, so. their food's not bad either. All right. Now, with Rock Bottom, are they allowed to sell it, um, you know, outside, or is it more brew and drink on premise? No, they sell in growlers, so you can okay. growler it and take it home. Cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And then uh, they do some pretty good stuff. with uh, What's Booze got there? I think he went to another bottle. I did. I think he manned up. What? He man man up. Up. <laughs> and I didn't just man up. I <laughs> was just a little baby Lucifer. Seriously man manned up. <laughs> <laughs> he put him on the table and said, boo, here they are. You got a uni Unibrew beer. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I do. <laughs> and from Unibrew, I have got Trois Pistols. And it is three pistols, obviously. Right. It is a barley wine style beer coming in at a strong, and I'm not talking weak here, 9% ABV. Just wow. Well, mine was 10. So I'm just saying. Yeah, well, mine's also been, <laughs> I've also aged mine for three and a half years. Woo! Not me on that one. <laughs> so I figured I'd try and age this one and see how well it aged. And, um,. The carbonation held up quite nicely. Oh, nice. A nice thick... Uh, oh, dude, the cylindrical glass. Nice. I was oh, yeah. to have one of those. Like a strange or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got this actually from some buddies that uh, do some 
beer uh, imports here. And they gave me a 12 pack of this, and it makes great for great reviews if you don't want to drink a lot. Oh, well, um, yeah. well the sooner coach, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a sooner coach. I've had enough. I'm walking away right now. Yeah, <laughs> turn your head and walk away, as uh, uh, Walt once said. I, I'm I'm actually I'm going against the grain on this because it's supposed to be in a tulip glass, and I did not put it in a tulip Look, glass. You, you now you got in the wrong glass. You took it straight from the bottle earlier. You put on way too. Uh, much what is this, Louisiana beer? <laughs> Oh. Hey, 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 I'm not eating food. food. I'm not eating food with it. <laughs> We're talking about an album. Yeah. Yeah. And Rod, Rod, and he didn't even show up on time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what what is up with this Canadian guy? Does he even know the rules? <laughs> Hey, we're, we we deal in we deal in metric, not imperial, or is it imperial, not metric? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> like how many liters is? I don't know. We use ounces here, man. Ounces. <laughs> it's three hundred forty-one milliliters. Look it up. Yeah, this is America <laughs> now. <laughs> Uh, how fast are you going? I don't remember. It's in kilometers. <laughs> so the smell it definitely has. <laughs> it actually, honestly, for a nine percent, I can down this. Well, Ooh. yeah, that's definitely what they wanted you to do. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's it's smooth. It's really it's not complex. You got a fruity note to it. Not a, a small, small hop, but a little bit of malt. But oh my god, it is actually smooth, delicious, and yeah, you can down that son of a bitch like there's no tomorrow. There better be uh -huh. a tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's called hangover. Yeah. <laughs> or you are the taxi driver. Yeah, <laughs> come here to November second when it's time to vote. There's no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Two days before my birthday, and you guys have to vote. Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, World War Three starts when uh, Trump gets voted in on November third. I'm voting for it. They get skipped. What's the real estate property up there in Canada look like? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> dude, we got lots of room, dude. You just have to understand. Members of Rush. Yeah. yeah. The November the November third craft beer con while will be taking place in Boozer's room. <laughs> we all move up there. So. Give me a job, please. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to remember minus twenty here is actually fing cold. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tyrod Taylor just do a bomb for a touchdown. NFL football. Uh yep, yep. The Goodwin, who is on nobody's fantasy team. <laughs> so for a rating, and we got on this two. To, we got two to nothing Cubs. So. All right, uh, and it, and Canada won over Russia three to two in overtime in hockey. Nice. Oh, oh that was yesterday. Know. I saw some. Of that, that was yesterday. Yep. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I saw some of that. Good. Yeah, but that was all preliminaries. That wasn't the official start yet. I Not know. Yet. Yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> Still, we beat Russia. <laughs> and the states say they have. Vladimir Putin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure your players don't get poisoned at some point. <laughs> God, God, Roger. Why, why, why do you think we, uh, we, we condition them in the very extreme cold up here? Yeah. <laughs> like Mother Russia, we train athletes to know everything. <laughs> So for a rating on this, I'm actually going to have to really go high on this. This is a 4.75 out of 5. Wow. Ooh. I do got one in my refrigerator about the other day. That sounds like a good Wow. Thing. Yep. It is, it is really delicious. Um, it aged really well. Uh, the alcohol did not come forward on it. It's really drinkable, really smooth, delightful, and, yeah, they nailed it out of the park on this one. Nice. <laughs> uh -huh. Nice. I think that's the highest rating we've had on here. Don't you think, Rob? Yeah, pretty much. I think I don't think I've given anything a four seven five yet. I don't think I have neither. All right, that's good. That. All right. Well, hell, let's ring the bell for booze. <laughs> <laughs> Door, sorry. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> squirrel. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> somebody say squirrel. Yep. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> uh, 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 Ron, Ron is sure missing this. Oh, <laughs> she can watch it on uh, the recaps and replays at 5, 7, and 9. Yeah. <laughs> Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> 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 so what place are you at, Crunch there, in Chicago? I'm actually at a place called Sunset Fo. It's a uh, Vietnamese uh, place. Oh, got some good of the best. Stuff. Yeah, it's got some of the greatest um, seafood on Western Avenue here. Hmm. So, so you went to a pho restaurant, but you ordered wings. Uh, yeah, that's because I, I've been here <laughs> now three times this week. So, okay. Because <laughs> yeah, not only... But not only are they uh, friends of mine here, they're also clients. So I came in here and uh, stuff like that. So I've been here three times, and so I'm kind of like a, a little, uh, you know. You're fold so out. I'm fold out. Fo <laughs> 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 is a Vietnamese word that uh, Boozer's gonna have to look up. <laughs> hey, we have fo up here. It's just a little <laughs> tabernacky fold, that's can all. He, can, he say, can we say he's tabernacky fold out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was actually going to turn around and call you Norm the amount of times you've probably been in there. So. I think I'm going to use that word in the office tomorrow at work and talking to people. Like, get out of my way, you tabernacker. And they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't look it up, and next thing you know, you got security escorting you out. It's all good. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're Canadian? I have no idea. Uh, damn. That's a compliment where I come from. <laughs> well, I'd be Tabernacle. Oh, I, oh, I can just see you. It was Tim Horton, who's not Tabernacle. Yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds more British I than it does French. Yeah, uh, get into Tim Horton, and someone says it, I'm like, I'm watching you. Tabernacle. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it properly in order to have the French. You have to have the French accents because it does sound British. Mm -hmm. But if you say it like yeah. Tabernacle, you'll say it with a very authoritative way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm, when I mix my Russian and French accents, it sounds absolutely messed up anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you definitely have a uh, human resource really shaking her head. Is Jordan, is Jordan, is Jordan French Canadian? Uh, because we'll have to use it all when he comes back if he <laughs> I think he actually is coming coming out towards the Boston way to try all these exclusive Boston beers, Prisa. Yeah, if you talk to him, where have you been, you tabernacle? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Coming out to Boston uh, around the end of October, maybe early November, so maybe we'll do a live Thursday night together. Yeah. Nah, there you go. There you go. I know he's coming out this way in uh, early October. So we might be doing live stuff here too. Nice, nice. He said uh, out east. Yeah. All right. So should we wrap up the live show? Do we wrap up our live show? Live show. The what show? What show? The live show. The live show. The one that we're on right now, Mr. Rod. The echo. That was the first time you cut out all night. Yeah, the echo. Uh -oh. Yeah. That's yeah. what threw me off. All right. We're ready to close Whoa. this tabernacle out. <laughs> All right, you tabernacles. <laughs> See you later, folks. Right. Once again, you hear, folks? And that's word of the thing. day, tabernacle. What? <laughs> what? All right, we were trying <laughs> to end out the show. I'm sorry. Don't say it to All your right. mom and your dad to see how they respond. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> The word, the word you use around the water cooler, Tabernacle. Yeah. Uh, so, well, once again, another episode of Craft Beer has gone wild and stuff, as you can tell. We always love to have uh, people join in, even if you are a boozer. We'll go ahead and uh, come on in and uh, enjoy. Um, if you ever need to know what is the lineup, Get a hold of Mr. Rod J. Just type in Rod J. Beer Venture. That will all pop up for you, and he will send you out an invite and bring you on. It only took us 18 episodes, but we finally get in our uh, tapping act together here. 
definitely know what next week's show is. We're, we're before, remember, Rod, we, we would wait to the, probably the night before, before we even knew what the hell we were going to do. Yeah, we were, um, we, we were some late tabernacles there. Yeah, we were. <laughs> so, um, but now we actually know what we're going to do because September 17th is actually the start of Oktoberfest. So we are going to be doing what, Mr. Rod? Next week will be Oktoberfest beers. That's right. Uh, all right. Pick up some beers. Oktoberfest beers to bring to the show. Talk about them. Beers that you would definitely like to drink with your babushka. So go ahead and uh, get your pretzel and your babushka. Yeah, is that Polish? <laughs> it's actually Russian. Actually I was going to say. <laughs> It's not hey, I, my accent, I, I know it's not schnitzel. What the hell? You guys, what the hell? You guys, you guys don't know. You guys your don't leader know. hose in. <laughs> Get your leader hose in together for crying out loud. That's right. Exactly. Holy hell. <laughs> so, as always, I'm Crunch Crutchmeyer here in Chicago, Illinois. Rod J out of Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati. See below www.rodjbeerventures.com. Check it out. This is going crazy. I'm a Thomas Metal 75 from the Massachusetts Beer Reviews channel of YouTube in Southern Massachusetts, um, right over the border of Rhode Island, to be more exact. And I'm up north past the 49th parallel, where I like to say tabernacle to all of you. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> in Alberta, we got Painkiller from Booze Reviews sitting around drinking with the boys down south and teaching them new words. Yeah. Boy, I'm going to get – for the people who get fired tomorrow, I'm no. deeply sorry. <laughs> 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 Oh. Well, All right. well as, as always, Mr. Rod J, what do we tell them? Keep drinking good craft beers and don't tabernacle anybody. <laughs> don't <go>. tabernacle them. <laughs> Cheers. See you later, foes. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.